just pop an ugly smile? Like, my cheeks balloon out and I just look bloated. Or like I'm having an allergic reaction. Like you can rest the palms of your hands comfortably on them. See? And I can't smile showing my teeth either because my mom couldn't afford to get me braces when I was a kid and I can't afford to get them now. And I have this one tooth kind of at the front that's like, that's like wedging its way between two others even though there's no space for it. So, I don't smile. Not in front of people. Like, I'd rather they think I'm, I'm snotty or, or conceited or unfriendly than ugly. Okay, so when my nan died, she didn't have any money in her bank account because she thought they were the government's way of controlling the masses. And she didn't leave anything under the mattress either because she spent what little she had on gin and the horses. But she did leave behind her sewing machine. I didn't like my nan, but the best times of my childhood were spent with her when she was sober and teaching me how to use that machine. She could make dresses out of curtains and trousers out of duvets. And, and that was the closest thing to magic I had ever seen in real life. Everything I wore as a kid was secondhand. Anything that tore or ripped or got too small was put under Nan's machine and turned into something brand new. And she was so good at it that I, I didn't care that I didn't wear the labels. I mean, they teased me, yeah, the kids at school. But I mean, they all look like carbon copies of each other, a bunch of sea of, 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 of Nike and Juicy Couture at the bus stop. Boring derivative bastard. It's all in now anyway, like upcycling and buying second hands and shit. If I were 15 again, they'd think I was so cool. Mom let me keep the sewing machine. She was gonna sell it along with the rest of Nan's stuff, all her little ornaments and, and fake diamonds, but I convinced her to let me keep it. It's like a hundred years old. Or no. Forty? But it's sturdy. It's a mean old son of a bitch in cold weather, but if you talk nice to it, it behaves itself. Sometimes. I repair clothes with it, duh. But like, not just my own, other people's too. It's a business, my business. I even took like a, a night class a few years ago on taxes and social media. And I have a, a business card with a little needle and thread on it. So it's official. Sarah Sews, that's the name of it. My business, my company. It took me longer than I'd like to admit to come up with a name. But yeah, it's cool being a business owner. Like if I uh, go out for a drink and I meet somebody and they say, so what do you do? I say, well, I have my own company. I get impressed by that. Like proper like, oh, this sounds potentially interesting. And like, uh, yeah, some people sort of tune out maybe when I start talking about what I actually do. I think it's, whatever. They all take my card and nearly all of them call me in an emergency. Like this, like this one guy, proper posh fella, Clive. Uh, I met him at a bar, a pub that neither of us would usually frequent because it was too lowbrow for him and too expensive for me. 
It was nearing 1 a.m. and he was wasted, and that's usually when men start chatting me up because I'm like the only viable option left. He laughed when I said that I repair clothes for a living. But he took my card, shoved it in the back of his wallet, and left without saying goodbye. Well, that's the last I'll see of him, I hope. But then he calls me at 7 a.m. a few months ago, begging me to repair a pair of expensive trousers that he'd managed to tear a hole in doing the splits at a Christmas work party. Well, you have to fix them. Oh, they're probably more expensive than anything you've ever owned in your entire life. So I did. And I always do a fantastic job, but this time with these trousers, if you had taken a magnifying glass to the stitches, you would not have known that the wearer made an ass of himself doing the Macarena in them. Like, I made them better than new. I made them spectacular. And I didn't do it because I fancied him either. Like, I don't. Not really. It's more because... Because I, I, I can remember him laughing at me. Like, there was something wrong with me. And like, I, I went to the bathroom like right after and had a little cry about it. And I pretended it was because I was drunk, but I had been on tap water most of the night. It was more because, I don't know, I guess I just wanted to prove something to him. Prove that I'm, I'm good at what I do. That what I do is clearly nothing to laugh at if he's calling me at 7 a.m. a day before Christmas Eve. I'm like, I don't know if I did. I mean, he barely even looked at them properly when I delivered them to him at a cafe, neutral round, because he wouldn't be, ca be caught dead in my neighborhood and God forbid I ever set foot in his. <sighs> he barely said thank you to me. He just handed me an envelope with a 50 in it and went on his way. I wanted him to ask me what I was doing for Christmas. Because I would have said I was going home to my mom's and that she would get drunk on the Baileys that she bought, two for one. And I'd cook us a turkey that we'd have to smother in gravy to make edible. And then we'd sit in silence watching some shit on TV, like musical from the 50s or EastEnders with them howling and wailing in the square because somebody's dead. And I'd curl up under a blanket on the couch. And in the morning, my mom would say, wasn't it time you were getting home because she was too hungover to be polite about it. And when I did get home, I would finish up the projects I had waiting for me, all the ones that weren't time dependent for all the little old ladies who live near me who whose fingers are getting too stiff to do the work themselves. Like, no rush, love. That's what they say to me. No rush, love. No rush, love. A pretty girl like you has probably got better things to do than tend to a tablecloth. I would have said all that to Clyde, I think, if he'd asked. Even if he'd laughed at me again and looked like I was demented. But he didn't. God, it's silly really to be hurt by it. had to get it repaired, the sewing machine. Because it started making this noise, like a, like a thunk, thunk, screech, thunk, that scared the crap out of me. It'll be fine though. I mean, the, the guy I took her to, he thinks he can fix her. 
screws loose, maybe? Mm -hmm. It is the only dependable thing in my life. Is that pathetic? Yeah, it, yeah, it is, because I could get a new one. I could get a loan and buy a really nice one. Like, they, you know, they make them in fun colors now. They, like a, like a lavender or like a, that vintage light green. I could do that. It's worse than the worst. I could. I mean, everything breaks eventually. Even sewing machines, even people. Like a, a part breaks off or, or, or wears out or just gives up and maybe it wasn't even the right part in the, in the first place. I used to think that was me. I mean, I still do sometimes. But it's getting better. A bit, occasionally. A woman complimented me on the bus this morning. She said she liked my jacket and asked where I got it. And when I said I made it, she was just so thrilled, I guess, genuinely. Said she loved a talent like mine and wasn't I so lucky. And she took my number down on the back of her hand with a pen because I forgot to bring the business card with me. I'm like, she probably went to work and forgot all about me and washed the number off, uh, but, but I, I felt it right here, just warmth. And it took me a minute to realize what it was. Pride. I don't think I'd ever felt proud of myself before. nice feeling, isn't it? 